This is our home. The peaceful village we call Bell Junction. Or sometimes just BJ. We share our village with some unusual creatures who call themselves humans. They're friendly, and they almost seem intelligent sometimes. Every time a bell rings, they go scurrying away. Probably the strangest thing about the humans is that they like to live above ground. We live underground where it's safe. Where else would any intelligent animal like us live? We know they want to be friends because they're always leaving things for us to use in our homes. Things to wash with, to sleep on, to tell time with, and sometimes J U S T T O. Uh, just to. Oh, hi! I'm Chester. Chester Cedar Tree. I'm a writer. I write stories, mostly about the happenings here in Bell Junction. This is the one I'm working on now, The Golden Rom. It's a story about the things humans leave lying around. Things we short tails can, um, uh, collect. That's it. Now, let's see. It all began one season in the wet, green time of the year, right after our spring wake-up. My cousin Myron was busy about his business, of finding good things to eat. When all of a sudden, he found something new. It came from the humans. They call them buttons. I don't know what they're really good for, but Myron liked them. And so Myron began his new hobby, collecting buttons. At least, it started as an innocent hobby. But then Myron began to change. Emergency? What emergency? You are sending the emergency code. Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to show you my newest. Uh, uh, my your buttons. What about the code? What about it? Grandmother said never to use the code except in an emergency. This is an emergency. My buttons are all over the place. Oh, forget your old buttons, Myron. What do you mean, forget my buttons? I mean what I said. Just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, Fitch appeared in his latest contraption. Fitch usually spends most of his time underground, except when he wants to show off one of his fancy toys. <laughs> Whenever you see Fitch, you know he's up to something. Usually something no good. <laughs> Me 
Meanwhile, I was still reminding Myron that the code rule was strictly enforced, to which he replied, Oh, hickory nuts, his usual reply. But suddenly our conversation was interrupted by a sound we'd never heard before. Stay out of the way, rodent. Ha, that nearsighted, no-eared ground digger. He almost ran over us with that, that wonderful car. Wonderful? What speed? What power? What a worthless piece of junk. What I wouldn't give to get rid of this thing. What I wouldn't give to own that beautiful car. Hmm. Aha! 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 46? Oh, hickory nuts! I thought I had more than that. Let me try that again. One, two, three, four, Tell us again how Grandfather discovered the music in the ROM. Well, <laughs> all right. Your Grandfather could always find the most interesting things around. And he was so clever. He could always figure out what to do with the things. But whatever he found, he always saved the best things for my birthday. And the best thing he ever found was... The Golden ROM. Yes, the ROM. And whenever I play it, I think of him. Who else but your grandfather would have known what a treasure it is? Oh, how wonderful. How dumb. <gasps> how dumb can I be? I've got more buttons somewhere. Maybe in my bedroom. That might be enough. Come along now, children. There's acorn pie. Oh, goody! 48, 49, 49! Oh, hickory nuts! I've got to have one more! Ooh! Grandmother doesn't need this, but I do! 50! Buttons for my fine motor car! But it's all I have! That's your problem! Now get it out! Ah! And take your worthless button with you! And don't come back unless you have something worth trading. Rodent! Oh, hickory nuts. There was a bad storm that night. A perfect night for something bad to happen. Grandmother and Emily were asleep at Grandmother's home. But Myron was still awake, thinking about that car. He just had to have that car. Unless you have something worth trading. Worth trading. Myron knew he had nothing else to offer Fitch. He had no valuables, no treasure. What a treasure it is. Treasure it is. Then a plan began to come to him. An awful, awful plan.
Hey! Slow down, Emily. I can't. Uh, that means here. No, it can't be. Three, three, then two. That's got to be here. You again? I thought I told you. Uh, this time I brought something worth trading. A musical instrument. Oh, a musical instrument. Yes, that is much better. Uh, so, is it a deal? Oh, the motor car, yeah. Well, yes, it's all yours. It's mine! It's all mine! My car? It's yours. Now get your car out of here. Hot acorn soup. Oh, Grandmother, I'm sorry for you. Your treasure is gone forever. It's all Fitch's fault. He cheated me. Myron, it's not Fitch's fault. It's your fault because you were greedy. Because you fell in love with things. At first it was just buttons, but then you took a button that wasn't yours. Then you stole the wrong, and you almost got your sister drowned. Right, Grandmother. It was all my fault. I'm sorry, Emily. That's okay, Myron. And I'm sorry I lost your ROM. The ROM isn't important. It isn't? 
The rum was just a thing. I still have what's really important. All of you. But Myron, you lost something very important. Our trust. You're going to have to work hard to get that back. I will. I'll make you all proud of me. And starting tomorrow, I'm going to get rid of all my buttons. Hey, look what I found. Wow, this is really neat. I wonder what this is good for. On second thought, I don't really need this. It's just a thing. And so ends the story of the Golden Rom. Myron was good to his word and got rid of all his buttons. He seems to have learned his lesson. Of course, we'll never hear the sound of Rom music again. But I guess that's the price you pay for making things too important in your life.